my eight people now. We have to get our eight. Eight. Uh, eight. One, two. She really can't come because she has two hearings, but she was very sad that she could lose it. One, two, three. Okay, Richie. Okay. You got eight. Yes, he did. Good morning, everyone. This is a day we've all been working to uh, and working for on the path to yes. Uh, we were in range for a while, uh, but until we could cross a certain threshold of enforcement for our workers' rights, for environment, and for the prescription drug issue, as you know, they were three of the areas uh, that we had put out there. I want to thank our chairman, Richie Neal, chair of the, the Ways and Means Committee, the eight members of the task force, whom I will acknowledge momentarily by thanking them uh, for their leadership in negotiating on different segments uh, of the legislation. I also want to thank uh, Richard Trumpka, the president of the AFL-CIO. Uh, he was persistent, dissatisfied, uh, knowledgeable, he, he really got us to a place which is a far distance from where we started with the proposal that was given to us. There is no question, of course, that this uh, uh, trade agreement is much better than NAFTA. But in terms of our work here, it is infinitely better than what was initially a pope, uh, proposed by the administration. And I credit our chairman, Richie Neal, for helping us navigate all of these places. The unity of our caucus on specific priorities in order to get the job done. And again, the brilliance, brilliance and knowledge of Richard Trumpka as to the ramifications of every uh, provision that was in the legislation. We'll be handing out a memo from the Ways and Means Committee, you may have it, which tell, explains why we are so proud of the distance that we have come from where we started with the administration on this legislation. It's a victory for America's workers. It's one that we take great pride, great pride in advancing. Uh, the members of the, of the, the eight members of the task force, Congresswoman Rosa DeLauro, who has a markup in her committee <laughs> about uh, workers' <coughs> rights or uh, uh, in, in uh, appropriations, Congresswoman Jan Schakowsky, you'll be hearing from, uh, Mike Thompson of California, uh, Terry Sewell of Alabama, Suzanne Bonamici of Oregon, whom you'll be hearing from, Jimmy Gomez of California, you'll be hearing from as well. Uh, where are my others? John Larson, John Larson of Connecticut, Earl Blumenauer of Oregon. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Here we are. And now it's my honor to yield uh, to Richie. He was indeed a maestro to make all of this happen. It's with great respect and admiration for his work and gratitude that I yield to the chairman of the Ways and Means Committee, Richie Neal. Thanks, Madam Speaker. So, thank you. Yeah. Uh, every once in a great while, you get to participate in a it-will-never-happen moment. <laughs> and uh, we are witnessing that uh, today. The other uh, value of technology, I will point out, was after a, a round of intense finishing conversations and negotiations over the weekend that started on Saturday morning with the speaker and myself and the trade rep, Robert Lighthizer, uh, we Mr. went back and... And Mr. Trump, the speaker, was he was on a hunting expedition. We <laughs> spoke with him frequently. But the speaker uh, talked to me earnestly about we're near, we're near, we're near. And on Sunday, when Tom Brady was about to take it in, all of a sudden I looked at my phone. It said Pelosi for caller ID. Long wisdom tells me. The hell with Brady, take the call. <laughs> <laughs> and I was watching Baltimore and the <laughs> uh, So this is a transformative agreement. It's a template, I believe, for future agreements. Our constant emphasis was on enforceability, enforceability, enforceability. We fixed that. And the idea and the notion that the president of the AFL-CIO, Rich Trumpka, would be supportive of this initiative, uh, I think, tells the story. But this is more than a triumph for organized labor. It's a triumph for workers everywhere across America. In terms of the working group members, I want to say that they strengthened the labor standards. They strengthened the environmental chapters. 
They enhanced the verification mechanisms for environmental trade. With the unflinching leadership of the Speaker, we also secured important changes in USMCA that preserve Congress's ability to change U.S. law to address the crisis we are facing with respect to high prescription drug prices. Over the intense period of these negotiations with the administration, I repeatedly emphasize that USMCA will deserve a vote because it's an agreement that Democrats shaped. I don't think anybody on this dais would have said uh, two months ago that we would have been able to get as far as we did in this negotiation. It was based upon goodwill, but also a determination that we acknowledge the problems that have existed in the past with enforceability. And there's a very telling moment, just to share with, with, with the media. On the day of the break in August with the working group, I said to the trade rep the last meeting, I said, nothing has fostered more disagreement about trade than the lack of enforceability. And the trade rep said to me, you are absolutely right. And he said, I want to tell you, and this is, I think I'm not uh, speaking out of school. He said, there have been people in the State Department, the Defense Department, and the Oval Office over the years who said, don't get this one upset and don't get that one upset because we might need them on future geographic issues. He said, our position has been that we are supportive of the thrust of what you want to do here. And I think that the initiative that we his offered, his, his mm -hmm. position, I think the, the offering that we have in front of us today is indicative of the goodwill. But some of the members on this task force, and including uh, the chairman of the subcommittee, Mr. Blumenauer, what a job they did. These were intense, argumentative, angry negotiations. I mean, this got really hot on a number of occasions. Uh, I think we set a world record for hanging up on each other, myself and the trade rep. And, uh, but at the same time, we also knew that this was an opportunity that we couldn't let get away from us. And we did that. So we will continue to share more details in text. The last point is a reminder that I traveled to Mexico with a delegation to meet uh, the president of Mexico. Then right after that, I traveled to Canada to meet with the prime minister of Canada and the minister for uh, defense and trade, Freeland. They are, I, I believe they were good partners in this. They conceded just about to every point that we asked for because of the following. Enforceability, enforceability, enforceability. So with that, Madam Speaker, I'll turn it back to you. Well, we're going to turn it back to Jan Schakowsky, yeah. our champion on, on the issue that related to pharmaceuticals in the trade agreement. Thank you, Madam Speaker. It's been an honor to serve on the working group. Um, the Trump administration sent us a deeply flawed trade deal that, among other things, would have raised the price of pharmaceuticals across North America by locking in high drug prices and expanding big pharma's, pharma's monopoly. Over the past six months, my Democratic colleagues and I on the working group, um, we, um, we worked for a deal that helps America's patients, workers, and all consumers. We now have a new and improved uh, renegotiated NAFTA that prevents Big Pharma from raising the price of prescription drugs across the United States, Mexico, and Canada. First, we eliminated provisions that undermine Congress's ability to change domestic policy that lead to high drug prices. The Trump administration tried to tuck into um, the 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 to tuck in big corporate gifts to big pharma in the USMCA. Ten years of market exclusivity for biologics. Th um, though we currently have for the, in the United States twelve years of exclusivity uh, in the United States, this trade bill would have tied Congress's hands and prevented us from enacting legislation. Um, I have a, a bill that would actually lower the exclusivity period. But that provision is now out of the trade deal. It is gone. Um, what, uh, and, and because of our, our current prescription drug pricing crisis, many Americans actually would go to Canada and to Mexico to get lower cost drugs. This would have raised the cost across the hemisphere. And this deal would have caused prices of prescription drugs in those countries to skyrocket. 
On the first day of our negotiation, I told the U.S. Trade Representative uh, Lighthizer that the biologic exclusivity provisions needed to be removed, and now they are gone. The Trump administration also tried to gift Big Pharma with um, increased protection for secondary patents and evergreening, changing a little bit of a drug in order to get a new and extended patent, and those provisions are gone. Finally, the Trump administration also tried to prioritize brand name drugs and uh, include barriers to market entry of generic drugs. And we have now revised those provisions to ensure generic com uh, competition and to improve access and affordability to medicines for people across North America. Lots of people to thank. We had an amazing staff on the, uh, uh, on the committee and in our offices. I want to thank Congressman Blumenauer. He and I were working on the pharmaceutical piece. I also want to thank organized labor, uh, Rich Trumka. They made that the, the drug provisions would be an important part of this, this legislation. So we have fixed the USMCA for America's patients, consumers throughout the hemisphere. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Jim Gomez did a remarkable job on the enforcement mechanisms. Jim? Thank you. Uh, first, let me thank the speaker for, and the chairman for trusting a, a red shirt freshman to be on this working group. Um, I always looked at this issue as very important because I, I come from labor. I work for the Af American Federation of State, County, and Municipal Employees, a uh, nurses union in California. So I've learned and I understood the seriousness of any trade agreements. When it comes to this one, we were um, asked to really work on the labor and the enforcement parts of the agreement. Um, we look at it as a three-legged stool. One, the labor rules within the agreement. Two, monitoring. And uh, three, is enforcement. When it comes to the rules, if you have squishy language, then it's hard to understand if there's any violation of that, uh, of that agreement. So we tighten up the language to make it more, uh, stronger and more enforceable. Then uh, two, you have to have monitoring of any violations on the ground. So we actually created some uh, monitoring mechanisms to assess Mexico's progress in implementing its labor reforms and complying with the rules that we laid out in writing. And three, if there's no consequences to a violation um, that we discover through monitoring of those rules, then the uh, agreement is not worth what the paper it's written on. So we created an enhanced labor-specific enforcement mechanism that will support and ensure viola that violation of the agreement standards will have real-world consequences. These provisions go to the objective uh, that the speaker laid out, the caucus laid out at the beginning of this uh, negotiating process. I want to make very clear that this is no longer NAFTA light. This is a new trade agreement that the, uh, that the working group and the Democrats have achieved with consultation, of course, with our, our, our partners. It is something that, when you look at it, that has included, that's never been included. Parts that we negotiated have never been included in any labor, uh, any trade agreement ever in the history of this country, ever. And that means that we're going to have uh, more confidence that this is actually going to benefit the American workers and it's going to create a, level play, a l more level playing field between Mexico, the United States, and Canada. Um, I think this is a, a big win. Um, this is no longer NAFTA light. And, and to an extent where we have to, uh, Mexico and Canada have to open up the agreement again and sign off on it again. Um, but I want to just say that I learned from some of the, the best staffers. We have great staff up here who have really provided the guidance and the expertise, the stakeholders. The speaker um, is, the, is a master legislator, and I think without her, um, Chairman Neal, and as Chairman uh, Blumenauer, we would not be here today. Thank you so much. Susan Bonamici, who uh, managed the environmental side.
Uh, thank you so much. Four years ago today, President Obama signed the Every Student Succeeds Act to replace No Child Left Behind with better policy, something that a lot of people said would never get done. Well, here we are today, and the reason it happens is because of strong leadership, and when we fight hard for the American people, we can get something done. And we are here today to say thank you to Speaker Pelosi, thank you to Chairman Neal, and thank you to the work group who did work and fight hard for better provisions. And I can say unequivocally, this is significantly better than NAFTA, and importantly, a new trade agreement setting high standards that is significantly better than the USMCA that came to us in the work group. And with regard to the environment, we fought hard for these provisions. We have better rules on the environment. Importantly, we have enhanced monitoring so we know when violations happen. And then critically, we have strong enforcement and strong funding to make sure that those provisions are being enforced. We incorporate several multilateral agreements, environmental agreements. We have an interagency committee to assess and monitor. This is going to be the best trade agreement for the environment, and that is because of the hard work of uh, the speaker, the hard work of Chairman Neal, and the hard work of the work group, and all the stakeholders who fought hard. So uh, thank you all for being here today on, on this uh, critical day, and look forward to continuing uh, till we get this over the finish line. Thank you. Thank you. Speaker? Thank you. Thank you all very much for your hard work and, uh, of, the, of the Gang of Eight and the <laughs> Trade Subcommittee and the rest. The, what will happen now, right, right now as we're speaking, the trade representative's on his way to Mexico for there to be a signing of this new revised trade agreement, which has come a long way from the original uh, uh, agreement that they presented to us. Uh, it, it, this, it makes all the difference in the world to American workers, workers in Canada, workers in Mexico. It makes all the difference in the world in terms of uh, the environmental issues, and it makes all the difference in the world in terms of the, what Congresswoman Schakowsky talked about in terms of not putting in a trade agreement something that not only bars those countries, but our country from making any changes uh, to strengthen the hand, to give more leverage uh, to consumers rather than to big pharma. With that, uh, we'll take some questions, but perhaps first, uh, the distinguished chairman would like to say what we do next in terms of in, the implementing legislation and the rest. Well, I think we're going to begin to share text, and people will have an opportunity to, to review uh, parts of the agreement before there's any, any uh, expedited period of bringing it to the floor. But I also think that uh, Minister Freeland is in uh, Mexico now with That's the trade rep, and we hope that uh, they'll copper fasten the issue. And as the pass out that we have from the Ways and Means Committee, I, I want to say something that uh, that Ways and Means staff, that trade staff, Amazing. they're the I'm best. Amen. Amen. They're the best. And I want to acknowledge Catherine, my Catherine. You have your Catherine, yes. we have that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh, so I think that I will begin to uh, get the information out. Uh, people have a chance to sort the implementation uh, language. And uh, get this to the floor. I think that there's no reason for uh, unnecessary delays. But at the same time, we want to make sure that there's a chance for people in the caucus to vet what we've put together. Thank you. Please. Please. We made our presentation this morning. Do you want to take questions? We're taking questions on the subject at hand. And since you're new to this, you, the others who are here regularly uh, understand that. Yes, ma'am. Is it a coincidence that you are announcing this bipartisan deal on the same day that you're unveiling your articles of impeachment? No, it's not a coincidence. It's just as we get to the end of a session, uh, we, there have to be some decisions made. Uh, the timetable for impeachment is the timetable of the committees, and that came to an end uh, with the hearing yesterday. But for us, this has been, we didn't know what day it would be, but the, the uh, Trade representative uh, Ambassador Lighthouser, who was quite uh, remarkable to work with, yeah. he he shared our values. He understood why we could not accept the Trump administration product, and he's he wanted to get this signed by the Mexicans and the Canadians. When you're dealing with something like this, 
it could be perishable. So he wanted to close while we were all in agreement, and therefore we are uh, we came to agreement as we go forward. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I do. I, just a uh, again, it was just the idea of timing on this was that uh, notification was offered that we might get there so that we had to prepare the Mexican president, the Canadian prime minister, and as I noted earlier, uh, the ambassador and the speaker cautioned him on Saturday. I'm witness to the conversation on the phone. He was very anxious, and she said, no, we need another confirmation phone call with Rich Trumpka, uh, which took place. And then uh, I think that... Uh, and he had, Rich Trumpka had his communication with his... He had to go with his affiliates. Yeah. And then, if I just may, on that score, we're coming to the end of the session. So if you engineer back from what we hope will be the end, December 20th, if you engineer back in order to get something accomplished, which we hope to do before the end of the session, uh, you have to move. Madam Speaker, what do you say to those who wonder how you can say that President Trump is an existential threat to democracy on the one hand, but also work so closely with his administration to get something like this done, which is such a priority for them as well? I would say that we came a long way from what he originally proposed, what he originally proposed. And there are some people who said, why make it look like he has a victory? Well, we've, we've, we're declaring victory for the American worker in what is in this agreement, but we would never not any one of us is important enough for us to hold up a trade agreement that is important for American workers uh, because of uh, any uh, collateral benefit that might accrue to any one of us. Yeah, a reminder, this is a hemispheric trade agreement. Mm -hmm. That's how important this is. And we were determined to alter the conversation about trade. We made, we made this. We, we made, made this made agreement. This. <laughs> yeah. It was one of those things where we made our own environment. Mind you, Mexico has NAFTA. So what is their motivation to? So we had to take everybody to a different place. And certainly, we would never have agreed to what the president proposed in the first place. Yep. Um, two questions. Can you just explain to the American people, you fought hard over these specific issues, what this means for the economy long term, you think? And then also, will the Americans have the ability to go into Mexican plants and verify? Yes. And uh, we also believe that uh, as we, we proceed now into the final stages of just the text sharing, that we'll be able to confirm what I've just said, not to miss the point that uh, we can't turn our backs and deny the reality of trade. As I noted earlier, 95 percent of the consumer class in the world lives outside of the United States, coupled with the other reality. I mean, if you talk to your children or your grandchildren and you talk about the Internet, I mean, they're already globalized. So the idea for us, I think, is to shape these agreements so that the American worker is covered as well. Chairman, Madam Speaker, you take this this is kind of a whiplash morning dealing with impeachment at 9 o'clock USMCA. And the day is young. And we still have legislating to do. Well, first of all, all you talk about when we come together is, when are we getting out here? Are we going to be out by Christmas? And now you're saying you're whiplashed into all this activity to get us out on time. Well, we've been through many crazy Decembers here. We're <laughs> getting there. That, that said, though, when I talk to a lot of your Democrats who are very interested in getting USMCA, who might be skeptical about impeachment, they, they emphasize why it was important to get this done, but they worried whether or not the attention and the, the legislative success of USMCA and perhaps other issues could win the day in the court of public opinion over impeachment when those issues are more prominent. Do you expect this to prevail and resound with those voters more than impeachment? This has a life of its own. This is about, uh, uh, as, as the chairman uh, said, globalization is a reality. It is not going away. And, and when we're shaping a bill that weds a, a, a trade with the environment, with workers' rights and the rest, this is it's, its own reason for being. It has nothing to do with the rest of whatever you were talking about. But, but I will say uh, that it, it is, uh, um, in, in terms of globalization, environment, and then talking about not using a trade agreement hurt our ability to make our own laws in the United States and those state, those countries to do so. I have one disappointment, which was 260, but I was two, 230. I was too late coming in Can on it. Can you explain it. that a little bit so people understand the, the, the two Well, it's no use going into it. I mean, I lost. Uh, here's the thing. Uh, they had 230 in the agreement. 
there are some members who wanted that, I guess. I don't know. He, I, he didn't name names, but he, he had 230 in the agreement, which is, in my view, the wrong way to go. It's a real gift to big tech. But I, I had said to the, and, and we know this, I had said to the uh, uh, trade representatives, we're not adding any more issues to the discussion. Environment, pharmaceuticals, workers' rights, enforcement. That came to my attention after I made that commitment. And, by the way, um, it was a letter from the chairman of the committee, Mr. Pallone, and the ranking Republican member asking that it be removed. But unfortunately, I got it after I made the pledge of not moving any goalposts. Sure, anymore. Can you talk about the time frame? It, it, a year, it was more than a year ago when the original deal was signed. How come it took so long to take this up? Because we were not going to accept the original right. deal. That's right. I mean, that's what it comes down to. Yeah. It, it, it's a real indication of why we are celebrating today this victory for the American worker. Because under the leadership of our chairman, Richie Neal, and the hard work of our our eight members of the working group, and the, in addition to that, the trade committee, and the input that we're getting from all of our members of our caucus about what the impact was in their areas. And we shared that with the trade, with Mr. Trumko, with the, Mr. Lighthizer, and the rest. It takes a while, uh, especially when you're starting with something that is a non-starter. And that's what the Trump administration gave us, a non-starter. So if, if you want to talk about the time, just understand the, the change that was necessary in that and had to be made in the agreement, the treaty, not just what we would do in our uh, implementing legislation, which is our own discussion, but what we had to uh, have with the Canadians and the Mexicans. Sure, Actually, I found it to be relatively short. Perhaps you <laughs> haven't been around here when we have had <laughs> major <laughs> battles on trade. Remember NAFTA 1? Yeah. Oh, my God. That was something so uh, intense, heated, and long. This was really yeah. uh, quite yeah. <laughs> easy compared to that. And as the chairman said, this can be... What we wanted was not only to inch our way to a place that we could. We wanted to take it to another place where it could be a template for future trade agreements, that a standard was set in terms of workers and, and how we respect our own legislative po uh, process here, as well as how we say that whatever you want to say, there is a direct connection between tra trade and the environment. You cannot yep. separate Thank that. You. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to start at the <laughs>